Y'all, I love, I love this show so much that I just had to do a review. And if you, you probably don't know that song. I'm talking about Signed with Rick Ross, The Dream, and Lenny S. So let's talk about this season one, episode four and five, and my thoughts are going to be all over the place. But um, I don't know where to start from Rick Ross getting you know his bald head rub almost like every episode young I don't know if he's really stressed or he's just trying to be super laxed um Nilly kind of a rip off of Nelly but we're gonna talk about that M Rose that's my girl that's her song say you wanna ride always trying to pick a fight with me you got you got you Javodi, he made a smart move to be back up in there as an intern. But y'all gonna stop playing with my mans, calling him the little helper. He he made a smart move. Like ten years from now, you don't know where y'all gonna be. But he has a job. I don't know if he's getting paid. It's probably a free internship, like an unpaid internship, because they said it's a junior internship, which means it's not an actual internship anyway smart move but let's talk about it so season episode four they were performing in the club to prove themselves listen just Brittany I thought that was like her Instagram name or something but I believe that's her stage name just Brittany listen when she hit that stage <laughs> she hit that stage But homegirl was committed because at first I was looking like, what? What is she doing? But she was committed. Now let's talk about her and Rick Ross. Now I don't know what's going on, but she got what she was one of the people chosen to go to Miami. So they land in Miami, and Rick Ross is like nibbling on her shoulder. I had to pause. I had to pause the show and take it back because did my eyes just see what my eyes just saw because it was a really quick snippet. I just see him, what is going on? So I took it back. I was like, yes, my eyes did see what my eyes saw. I was, oh my goodness. She said from the very beginning, yes, I'm a woman. And listen, I don't want to misquote her or anything. Don't come after me. But... I'm a woman and you know, yes, I'm going to use my looks, which is, you know, at first I was looking at her like, oh no, no girl, that's not how you do it. But she's actually smart with it. Like she even said it herself. Yes, I'm sexy. Yes, I'm bad. You know, my body is banging all that. I'm just paraphrasing. Like, don't say that's not what she said. I'm just paraphrasing like what she was the gist of what she was saying and she was like but she's trying to get this business because even when she got in the studio with Rick Ross he was all complimenting her talking about she look good she was like I know but right now it's about this music it's about this work <laughs> yes girl yes so you know she's not dumb she's smart she is smart I just don't like when she came for Bria what was that episode three or episode two I know we taking it back but I don't like when she was like, you just mad because I'm sexy? You mad because I'm sexy? I was like, no. Not everybody who picks a problem or beef or argument with you is mad because your body is banging. No. It ain't got to be like that. So, what else? What's his name? Haitian Mufasa. I hope I'm not wrong. I, I don't want to be wrong, but he's good. Second episode or third episode, Rick Ross is on his track. That's what I'm talking about. But Mufasa, Haitian Mufasa, please be humble, okay? Sit down. Like, I don't want it to get to your head too much. I know you're talented. We know you're talented. Just be humble. Okay, be be humble. Javodi and the issue of Bria and him snapping off 
listen it's something more going on between them than just meeting on this show or whatever there's something going on y'all can't tell me i'm wrong y'all can't tell me i'm wrong so she was mad because he snapped off but like when i was watching the show because last night i was late so i came at the middle part of the show so i didn't see him snap off so i had to re-watch it today and i was like he did not snap off like bria i love you girl you kind of was interrupting my girl m rose's session that you wanna ride always trying to pick a fight with me hey <laughs> okay anyway so you was interrupting her session and asking Javoti for something else and you know the cameraman he was getting the side eyes and the facial reactions because here he was with Javoti. then he quickly got M Rose reaction like what's going on homegirl was in the studio like Javoti is supposed to be in the stew, cooking up in the stew, aka the studio, and he, here he is, like, talking to Bria, Bria's, Bria, you were wrong, I'm just, don't shoot, don't shoot, I'm just saying, Bria, you was kind of wrong, uh, you know, I just, the thing is, the moguls, I don't think they watch the show. I know the dream said he doesn't watch it. I was watching on Breakfast Club. He was like, he doesn't watch the show. He'll probably watch it like after. But I wish they would kind of see what's going on. Like, damn, Javoti actually did not snap off. Like, he's trying to do his job. Bria was wrong. But anyway, we on this too long. I'm talking about them too long. Last thing I will say is with Javoti and Bria, you know that sneak peek they showed us for season episode six? She was like, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Go to the strip club. Bria, what's really going on in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your feel? What's really going on? Like, what are you, are you really feeling, Javoti? Because if some boy I didn't care about was going to the strip club, I don't. I'm not saying anything. Like, I'm done with you. Anyway, I gotta talk about M Rose. She is talented. She's talented. Y'all not gonna sleep with my girl. Like, she's talented. Unfortunately, she got sent home because like. Her deliverance wasn't strong. And I do agree with the dream, Lenny S. Rick Ross. Like, one thing I must say that I have learned in choir, one thing I learned is that just as loud as I'm talking, that's as loud as you need to be singing, okay? Don't be down here, Emeralds. And maybe one day you'll see this video. Maybe not. Say you want to ride. Always trying to pick a fight with me. Just because that mic is in front of you doesn't mean that you got to keep it cute and pretty. Get ugly, which is what my choir director used to tell me. Get ugly. Open your mouth. Like, you know, like, get those notes out. Push that breath and those vocals. Say you want to ride. Always trying to pick a fight with me. You got, you got, you got, you got, you got my love on lockdown. I love that song. I do. I'm actually straightening my vocals by yelling right now, but I'm just really passionate about this show. Like, who would have thought? So, who else are we going to talk about? No, let's talk about M Rose one, one, one last thing. So, unfortunately, she got sent home and. She's really stuck on that guitar, which is not a problem. But as an artist, you want to be well-rounded. You want to switch it up. You want to keep them guessing. So she had her last chance on the last episode that I played last night on the guitar. And the dream said it. She is struggling. Struggling. She was on the guitar. Next thing you know, she's done. And knocks the mic stand over i was like no no when she was performing like the she was i don't know what it was like it just wasn't sounding right together i don't know if she was off key or her notes were just sounding sour if you know what i'm saying like when you're trying to harmonize with 
the good even when i was listening to it i was trying to rock with my girl literally y'all seen the jay-z meme i know y'all seen the jay-z meme where it's like when you listen to a song you're trying to rock with it but you can't because she's talented like it's just unfortunate she wasn't really able to deliver and it doesn't have anything to do with your body because i know she had a like thing where she got into it with just britney it has nothing to do with your body if you pretty or nothing if you deliver that shit yes i took it there if you deliver that shit people will rock with you so bye girl i'm sorry but listen if you want to write me some songs honey let's talk let's talk because your songs yes nilly which feels like a ripoff of Nelly, you know, just that one vowel in the middle. Anyway, he... <laughs> uh, he's really emotional. So it's giving me like Meek Mill vibes too. When he had his last moment to prove himself, he was up there i don't even want to mimic him got this scar gotta do this gotta pay my mortgage gotta help my mom gotta feed my brother you know like he's talking about the struggle the grind the hustle and i was at first in the beginning i was like but then as i continued to listen i was like damn and i was like damn actually like he put his heart and his soul into his music and that is good too but what the moguls are looking for is something what the moguls are looking for is something catchy something people can rock to and sing along with but y'all know meek mill he came out with used to pray for times like this to shine like this hold up wait that's the wrong words take it back used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this so i could grind like this to shine like this yes that's what it reminded me of. Where is this on the ground? Anyway, that's what it reminded me of. I was like, yes. So, he almost got sent home, which was a culture shock. No, not a culture shock. A shock. Like, a real shock. But he did it. He got another chance. He just, had, he just got to make some, like, you know, things you could dance to the club in. But like Lenny S. said... You start off with those songs, like the hit records, then after your like third, fifth album, you start making those songs that people can cry with you, that people can laugh with you, get emotional with you. So, I feel like that's everything, that's every, ooh, did we talk about Rick Ross and just Britney? The sneak peek for next week. Y'all, did y'all see? Rick Ross was all up on that like a cognac, cognac, whatever the saying is. Okay, but I don't know what's happening because y'all can tell that I really like this show. So I don't know what's happening because y'all know that just Britney and Dylan, they got a thing kind of going on, whatever that thing is. Rick Ross, I don't know. He a boss. He a boss. Rose, Rose, what to do, what to do, what to do. He a boss. He's a boss. So he should not be caring about that. But I feel like you kind of care, Rose. And you know you can get any woman that you want. But he said it. I'm quoting him. He was like, Dylan has Britney's attention. Now it's time to see what he got. Ooh. And Dylan, Dylan, he was like, I don't know what he was referring to. But he was like, it's time to fall in love or fall back. Something like that. I don't know if he's talking about him and Britney or is he talking about Britney and Rick Ross. So, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be keeping up. I'm going to be in the need to know because I need to know. Um, What's the last thing? I feel like I forgot somebody. Ooh, DJ Khaled. How could I forget you? My man is... Shining, 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 yeah. Hey, all of this winning, I've been losing my mind. Literally, he's shining, he's winning. That song is they, the perfect song 
for him. So when he came up in the studio, listen, my man's DJ Cali. He is funny. So you know, just like Kevin Hart. I don't mean to sidetrack. Anytime you see them, you just start laughing because they are funny, but they serious. So anyway, let's get to the seriousness of DJ Khaled. So DJ Khaled came up in the stew with Ren Dylan, King Dylan, um, Marcellus. I'm sorry if I forgot your name, if that's the wrong name. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah. That was where Lenny S was, right? They was in LA. Yeah, because Rick Ross was in Miami. Okay, so DJ Khaled step in the stew. He up in the stew with, you know, these artists trying to make it. And Marcellus, again, I'm sorry if that's not your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He was kind of chill. I was not expecting that because Marcellus, you, you usually bring it. He was kind of chill with his deliverance of his verse to DJ Khaled. Then the next was King Dylan. King Dylan, he was, he was good. Ren, he brought that. He brought that. Like, anytime he rapped, I'd be scared. I'm like, but he's good. He's good. And I, like I said, from this show, I'm learning so much. Like, when someone asks you to sing or rap, you better bring it. Like, it's a performance. I don't care. Listen, I don't care if you are in an enclosed space like this. You better bring it. Bring it. And Ren brought it. Well, I'll see y'all next week. You know I'm going to wrap it up. And I'm not literally talking about that. Wrapping, I'm going to be talking, talking, talking. So, see ya next time when we talk about signs. Hello. Peace. We all supposed to be one race, happy and free, but how can I be?